15 months ago, I thought my life was over. I thought my marriage was over. I would lose my family. And I was sitting in the living room with my wife and just falling apart. I really don't know why she was even there still with me. We were on our knees, knelt down. She said, you think you're saved? Right? I don't know. I thought I was. I grew up in church, knew about the Bible, knew about Jesus, but I didn't feel saved. I felt separated and ashamed and full of guilt and full of fear. Tormented. Just tormented. I have spent an entire lifetime struggling with temptation. I have struggled with alcohol. I have struggled with sex, um, pornography at a very young age. You know, struggling with that, even as a newly married guy, you know, those temptations and those thoughts. And seven years in our marriage, you know, I struggled with infidelity and it almost ended our marriage then. And then I got sober and thought that would fix everything. All the other stuff would stop as well, you know? And just eventually going down the path I was and the more success I got with my career, the more I thought I could have what I wanted and do what I wanted to do. I created this dual life, lust, no matter who they were or where I was, you know, could be in church. I entered into a relationship outside of my marriage with someone, I'm a bad person. <laughs> you know, I kept my wife in the dark about everything. I was there, but I wasn't there. I was present, but not present. That in itself led to me starting to branch out and want to start up other things with other women, the sexting and the, all, the, all, all that started up. Um, random people that I didn't even know. I was convinced I'm gonna leave my wife. I'm gonna leave my kids. But now I'm in so deep, I don't know what to do. I'm sunk. This is like sociopath stuff, you know? This is like crazy. Oh, I can't even. I've read that infidelity is the next to the death of a child, the worst pain. It's so painful. You're in this pit and you don't see that there's You don't feel like there's any way out. And, and then you'd have to tell your kids. Infidelity, we have dealt with that. Dave knows what that brings in a relationship. He knows how much pain that causes. It is so hard to believe that anybody could come home to their family and look at them 
and lied to them like he did. That was that tough time of not really knowing what we were going to do, of her not knowing what she was going to do. You know, we had a lot of friends that said, you know, you should leave him. You are going to leave him, right? And we had a few that were not so quick to go there. They were, you know, God can do anything. It was several, two or three weeks before my wife and I ended up on our knees in our living room. As painful as it was, as, as heartbreaking as it was, I still knew that I would be committed to my marriage vows. I knew I had to forgive him, and I was going to have to walk out that forgiveness. She chose to honor God and to honor our marriage by fighting for it rather than walking away. Dave and I were on our knees in our living room. And she started praying for me and then prayed with me. At that moment, I had the opportunity to, uh, to give my life away, finally. That was the night that I asked God to come to me right where I was and to rescue me and get me out of this pit that I was in. And uh, I thought I had to tell him what a wreck and what a mess I was, and he already knew. And, uh, took me as I was. That's all I really wanted, for somebody to just take me the way I was. Even though I was in the throes of all that pain and hurt and brokenness, once we opened our eyes, I knew something had changed in Dave. He saw the beauty of the Christ for the first time. To do somebody completely one way and then turn around and, and do you completely the opposite, I guess that's what God does with us, you know? I guess that's what grace is. We get what we don't deserve. My name is Dave Robbins and I am second.